What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today is Friday, July 12th. We are going to review all of the trade alerts and positions for the week. This is our exclusive recap for pro members. Before we jump into the alerts, let's head over to the community and see who got caught being hot this week. This week goes to our member that goes by the handle KK. There was a couple members who use interactive brokers and I haven't used them for 10 plus years. And so uh, fortunately, the power of the community stepped in and KK uses interactive brokers and was, was able to send some screenshots and give some direction on exactly how to execute orders. Great job, KK. Thanks for stepping in and helping out. You got caught being hot and uh, I sent you a, a private message. Go ahead and grab some Trade Hacker swag. Uh, sport that everywhere you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, so let's jump into... The, oh, one other thing. Before we jump into the alerts, I uh, wanted to introduce you to a new member of our team. Dr. Chad Searcy is coming on board with Navigation Trading. He's been a member here for a little while and uh, loves trading. Very clear the concepts. He will be in the community helping out. His main role is, uh, his title is Director of Trader Success. So he's going to be helping onboard new members. And uh, so he's going to be active in the community and uh, and be available to, to help out as well. So super excited to have Chad on board. And uh, if you get a chance, tell him congrats. All right, let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with Monday the 8th. Scroll down here, quite a few more alerts than we had last week. Obviously, last week was a short week, but uh, first trade was an opening trade that we did in Walmart. This is a pre-earnings long strangle. The reason we did a strangle instead of a straddle in this case is just because price was kind of between strikes, so we just widened that out a little bit. The concept is exactly the same. We're looking for implied volatility to expand and price to move. And so that's what we're looking for. We've still got that trade on in Walmart. You can see price is up a little bit today. We've got a tiny bit of profit here, uh, but we need a little bit of a continuation to the upside or a big move down to profit on this. Total uh, capital used, total max, uh, max uh, loss on this would be a thousand bucks. So we are looking for about a 20, 30% profit. So if we can get two or 300 bucks on this, which would mean if you know if price got out to about right here or down to about right here, that's what we're looking for. And we've got some time on this trade. Earnings is not out here until 8.15. So if we can get a decent price move, either higher or drop lower, that is what we're looking for. And then of course, if applied volatility continues to expand going into that earnings announcement, that would help as well. Uh, all right, next trade was an opening trade in SPX. So we did, we released our newest strategy course, the weekly income iron condors and weekly income double calendars. And so we started uh, posting alerts on that this week, starting out with an iron condor in SPX. So let's take a look at that one. Uh, so if we go to our analyze tab here, so in SPX, uh, this is what this looks like. So you can see price has moved higher. So we put this on when price was fairly centered. It's moved all the way up here. And so remember, we close these out either if we hit a predetermined theoretical stop loss, which equals about half of our max profit. So our max profit on this is uh, 1780 bucks. So if we got to a point where we were down about 800 bucks, 900 bucks, uh, that's when we're going to look to close that out. Now, we're pretty pretty much break even on the trade right now. The last trading day is Monday. So if, if you were nervous about prices exploding higher over the weekend, then you would want to, you know, you could potentially close this off, uh, close this out for a, kind of a scratch break even. We are holding it and just hope, you know, hoping for just a little bit of a down move uh, as we open on Monday. And so we'll see if that happens. Obviously, if price explodes higher, we're going to take a loss on this one. If uh, if the market drops between now and Monday, we will uh, make a nice profit. So that's kind of the, the risk that you're taking on this trade. And so as long as you just understand that, 
Uh, there's nothing magic about us knowing, us holding on because we know the market's going to go down. That's certainly not the case. Uh, but that's we're just playing the probabilities. We're, we're being mechanical with these. We're putting them on and we're either taking them off if we get to a point of a loss that, that hits kind of our theoretical stop loss or uh, we're taking them off one day before expiration. Now, Monday is the last trading day. So again, uh, you could take it off today for a scratch or you could hold it until the morning uh, Monday, which is what we're doing. So that's where we're at on that. And then uh, one another alert that we actually just sent out this morning today on Friday was a weekly income double calendar trade, okay? So that looks like this here. And, and the reason we put that on today is, is the market overall, the S&P's up a little bit. So implied volatility is contracting. And so remember from the course, if implied volatility is contracting, that's when we'll put on a double calendar. If it's expanding, we want to try to take advantage of that and put on an iron condor to benefit from the contraction. So we put that on this morning, and so uh, and and we like to we like to kind of ladder into these. And so, you know, when we price was kind of hanging out, just uh, kind of on our iron condor around center, kind of grinding higher. So we didn't want to put on another one. We don't want to stack them around the same price levels. But price was about twenty nine eighty when we first put this on. Now it's at about uh, three thousand seven. You know, so that's a decent amount, and, and we're at our break even on this trade. And so we wanted to ladder another trade kind of centered around the current price. And that's what we did with our double calendar. Now, the day that we put on the iron condor on Monday, uh, implied volatility, the market was down, so implied volatility is up. So that's why we put on an iron condor. Today, the market's up, implied volatility is down. So that's why we chose the double calendar. All this is in that in that weekly income strategy course. So if you have questions, a lot more detailed explanation uh, is there. So that's where we're at with SPX. All right, next trade, closing trade in oil, forward slash CL. So we close out our oil trade, booked over 35% of max profit in just 11 days. So we are out of oil, uh, or we were out of oil. Uh, the next day, price moved around a little bit, so we put on another one centered around the current price. And so let's take a look at our oil position now. After we put it on, price actually made a pretty massive move higher. Well, in one day, it was up like 4%, but you can see price is hanging out right here. So still well within range, nothing to do but wait in oil. Next position, closing adjusting trade in forward slash GC, which is gold. So we had an iron condor on in gold, closed out of that, booked over 35% of max profit on that piece of the trade. Now we are still holding our short call vertical from a previous iron condor, and we've still got that. And so we've got that. And then in a later alert, I'll just kind of skip ahead. Uh, a couple days later, we put on another iron condor because implied volatility was nice and high, IV percentile at 93. So we just layered on another iron condor. And so if we go to the charts, take a look at gold, you can see in this cycle, which has, TOS displays it as the August cycle. It's got 13 days to expiration. We've got this short call vertical spread on. You can see price is out of our range here, so we're looking for a little bit of a down movement to get back into range, hopefully next week. And, uh, and so that's what that's that piece. And then we've got our other full iron condor, which is pretty centered, pretty close to where we put it on here. No profit or loss, so just playing the waiting game on that piece. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So we've got several positions uh, that are still in July. And so we're going to need to either roll or close those. Next week is expiration week. So we're getting down to crunch time where we need to do something with those. And so we just took this short call vertical in DIA, rolled it from July, which had nine days to expiration at that time, rolled it out to August, and adjusted our strikes uh, appropriately. And then we're still holding our other full iron condor. And so let's take a look at DIA. So this is our short call vertical. You can see price is out of our range, so we need some movement back down into range. But the but the alert that we just sent is this one, which we rolled out to August. And so you can see price has actually moved higher since the roll, but we are still within range on that one. But just kind of holding these for that short delta exposure. 
Speaking of short delta exposure, we, we like to have kind of in that one to one to five to one of short delta versus our theta. We're right at about three to one on that ratio. And, uh, and so could definitely use some down movement next week to help our overall portfolio. Uh, and remember that we beta weight that delta to SPY. If, you have, if you're newer and you have questions about that, there's a couple articles on the blog. Just search for Delta or one of the articles is called Trading Options Like a Professional. Uh, you can search those two and it gives a little bit more explanation about our overall Delta management uh, scenario. So that's DIA. Uh, I mentioned that we are still holding our full iron condor. We were at that time, but then on a later alert, actually this next one, we closed out that put vertical side because because price breached our break even. There's very little value, just two cents left in that put vertical side. So we closed that out. So now we're holding those two call verticals that I just showed you. Uh, let's see, did I skip one here? No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, next trade was a a rolling adjusting trade in our friend Natty Gas. Natty Gas worked well for us this week uh, with the up movement that we've seen. And so in this case, uh, we are down to just 15 days to expiration. Remember when we get to under 21 days, we wanna go ahead and roll out in time when it comes to these undefined risk positions. So that's what we did. We just rolled this spread from uh, August with 15 days out to September with 47. And then we adjusted our call strike from 245 to 255. And that just makes it a little bit less inverted. Um, and then we kept our put at the three strike. So we've got two pieces to this natty gas position. Uh, and then and we're and both of them are sharing the three put. So this is the combined look at both of those. They're very similar. Our calls are just you know 0.5 off from each other, uh, but we do that just to keep them separate because we entered them as separate trades. And so we're still in the same position. We could just we could use a little bit more upside movement from Natty Gas. And uh, if we take a look at the charts, you know we've had that huge down move. Now we're starting to see some of that upside, which is helpful. If we can get a little bit of a continuation to the upside, that would be great. And in that gas, the uh, if we look at the implied volatility, which we've got to use UNG for, you can see the implied volatility continues to stay nice and high in that gas. So keeping that short premium on is what we want. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we had uh, two sets of short call verticals on that were previously part of Iron Condors. One of them had moved just you know well out of range, and so we went ahead and just closed that one. Uh, just you know, we we're con as the market goes higher, we're continuing to accumulate more and more short delta. So we didn't want to. Uh, so we ended up just closing this one out, just kind of lessen that that overall short bias. Um, and then we're still holding our other short call vertical in July, which we will roll next week. So let's take a look at that one. And I mean, yeah, this market's just been super strong. If we take a look here at this one, that's the one we closed out. And then here's the one that we still have on. You can see price is just out of range. If we get a quick down movement back into range, that would be helpful. And then we'll roll that out to August. So that's the plan in SPY. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DE. So this is John Deere. So we just extended our duration. We had a long put vertical in July with seven days. And again, we're just we're just rolling these out from July to August. And we don't want to do them all at one time, but we have several that we need to do. So we're just spreading out those rolls over time. So did a couple today, closed out our SPY, rolled our DE, and then we'll do a few more next week, kind of spread out over throughout next week as July uh, expiration week is next week. So that's that's the plan there. So in DE, let me go to that here. So you can see we just did that today. And come on, toss, update, there we go. So it's pretty close to right where we put it on prices right there. And so just looking for some more downside to benefit that trade. And lastly, uh, we closed out a winner in Cat Caterpillar. We had a pre-earnings long call in Caterpillar, and we booked over 40% profit in just a couple days on that one. If we take a look at the chart of Cat, what we're looking at here is, you know, we had this big push higher, and then we had this little pullback here, and so we were just looking for a potential continuation to the upside, which is exactly what we got. So we got in here. 
and it went down a little bit again. I think we got on this day, went a little bit against us that day, and then boom, boom, popped up higher. And uh, we were looking for that upside momentum going into the earnings announcement, as well as uh, an uh, expansion in implied volatility. It actually contracted today with the market and the stock moving higher, uh, but it moved enough to allow us to book a nice uh, 40% profit. So those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with ES. This is another one that we have in, this is a long put vertical that we've got in July with just seven days to expire. So we'll be addressing this one next week. Because this is an options on futures contract, we are at no risk of assignment. So even though this one moved significantly against us, uh, you know, we, we can hold this all the way up to until expiration day without any issue of assignment. So because it's already at max loss on this piece of the trade, there's no reason that we're not in a hurry to roll this. We'll, we'll do this one probably last and look at this, you know, later in the week, next week. Gold, I mentioned that one. Uh, Nat gas, I mentioned bonds. So we've got this short strangle, inverted short strangle in bonds. You can see prices made a nice down movement, which is getting back into the center of our range. This is inverted. You know, when we put this on, uh, price continued to move higher. And so we just continue to roll our puts up, roll our puts up until it was actually past the call. And so we've got our 154 put up here and the call down here, meaning that's inverted because the puts are higher than the calls. Uh, and that's okay. You know, I mean, obviously we're down on the trade. Anytime you have to go inverted, that typically means you're losing on that trade, but you're just continuing to roll that, roll up the untested side or roll down the untested side, collect those credits. And then what we'll do as we get closer to expiration, you can see we've got 42 days in this trade. So we've got a ton of time, but as this profit line grows and, and you know, if we can, if price can stay within our range, then we'll look to either close this out or potentially roll out to the next cycle. If we look at implied volatility on TLT, you can see IV staying nice and high at around the 65 on the IV percentile. Um, so just continuing to manage that and play the waiting game on the bonds. The reason we don't use, uh, obviously, the uh, the implied volatility implied volatility indicator is not accurate or isn't available on the futures. So that's why I was looking at TLT, the corresponding ETF for that contract. Wheat, we've got two different positions on, two different pieces of the position on in wheat. We've got this iron condor, or price is hanging out right here. It got all the way down to our break even. There was still a decent amount of premium left on the untested side, on the call vertical side, which is why we hadn't adjusted or closed it out. And now price has come all the way back in. So just playing the waiting game there. Then we've got another iron condor right here, where you can see price is... Uh, well within range on that one as well. So hanging out right here. So just playing the waiting game in wheat. If we can just continue to get a little bit of a ping pong action in price, uh, potentially book profits on both of those, that would be the ultimate plan. Next position, Apple. So we've got this long put vertical that we've been holding for short delta. Uh, again, with the strong movement in price, price has moved up. So we'll look to roll this one or close it next week, depending on where we're at with everything. I mentioned DE, I mentioned DIA, FXI. Uh, so this one is, we just need a little bit of movement to get back into range there. Uh, I mentioned last on last week's video, I mean, even with all this trade war talk between the US and China, this is the Chinese large cap ETF and implied volatility, the percentile and rank are basically at zero, meaning absolutely no fear in China. So interesting that implied volatility is not higher there. But that is where we're at. So if we get a little bit more downside, we will uh, close this one out in FXI, or we might potentially roll depending on where we're at in our overall portfolio delta at that time. Uh, GS, another short position that we got on, we have on. Now this one is we've got earnings on 716 before the market. So basically, uh, on Monday uh, we will potentially do something with this one. Uh, you can see price is well out of our range. So if we can get, uh, we'll probably hold this through earnings, which is so Tuesday morning. Obviously, if we get a big move down, that would be a great benefit to us. If not, we'll probably just roll it out or close it um, uh, after the earnings announcement. So we're holding this through earnings. 
If you are not comfortable with that, then you can all, always close it out, but that's the plan for us. Intel, we've got this inverted short strangle in Intel that we uh, that we had to adjust and manage. So just continuing to play the waiting game on this. Intel has earnings uh, coming up as well, not for a couple weeks though, so we've got some time. If, uh, if we're able to get out for a profit before earnings, we'll do that. If not, we may hold that through earnings as well. And IWM, we've got this iron condor. Now, I was actually, when price was a little bit lower this week, I was trying to get filled. I had a uh, resting order, never got hit. So price moved up a little bit. And so we're just going to hold this into next week. And if we get a, a little bit of a move higher, we can book that piece. And if implied volatility pops up, we may add to this. Uh, we're still we're down overall on our IWM trade um, with with all adjustments and everything, but we may you know so we'll see what happens next week. We may look to um, you know I don't I don't necessarily want to add to this with with implied volatility this low, but if we get a quick shot down and implied volatility spikes up for some reason, uh, then we potentially would look to add to this one, uh, but more than likely just close it. IYR we've got. Uh, this is a theoretical position. This is our actual position. See, price is hanging out in the upper end of the range. Uh, so I was, I was looking to potentially add one here uh, just to center a new piece around the current price. Uh, but I didn't just because implied volatility is a little bit lower. Now, it's, it's decent, but it's not over that 50 mark that we like to see to sell premium. But if we get a little bit of a pop higher, uh, next week, even if it's not quite up to that 50 level, because implied volatility is fairly low across the board. So we got to start, um, you know, we want to stay active. We want to have positions on. And even if implied volatility is a little bit lower than that 50 mark, uh, we might potentially look to add to that, but we will see. QQQ, we've got two sets of short call verticals in QQQ. You can see this is the combined. This is both of them together. Very similar. Uh, price is hanging out right here at the break even. Just need a little bit of downside movement to get back into range there. SMH, we've got two pieces on here. We've got this uh, adjusted strangle where price is hanging out right here. So could use a little bit of down movement to benefit that. And then in addition to that, we've got this other strangle. Has not been adjusted. Price is hanging out right here. So just waiting, playing the waiting game in that one. Uh, obviously could use a little bit of down movement to get back to center on that as well. Uh, I mentioned SPX, I mentioned SPY, I mentioned Walmart. Lastly, our other last short position is XLK. Again, kind of blew out to the upside there. So we've been holding this for that short delta exposure and we'll probably continue to do that. Uh, and, and so we'll look to probably roll that one next week. So that's where we are with all the positions. Uh, looking into next week, I mean, like I said, implied volatility is pretty sparse. And so just kind of picking our spots, uh, you know, here's SPY, implied volatility is super low. Um, and so we're going to have to start putting some on some positions. And we'll do one of two things. A, we'll add to positions even if they don't, or, or we'll put on positions even if they're not quite at the 50 level based on IV rank and IV percentile uh, to just to st uh, stay active selling premium. The other thing we'll look to do is potentially add some more directional trades. So add some long bias trades and I had some short bias trades that are not really implied volatility sensitive and um, and then just in kind of play both sides of those uh, but that's that's kind of the plan if implied volatility stays low so that's it my friends everybody have a great weekend hopefully we get a little bit of down movement next week which would help both our current positions as well as it would help implied volatility spike. Uh, so we could add some new positions. So that's the plan. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you next week.